Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, this is Mr. Oliver. I'm coming to you from my basement, so please excuse me if, if you hear my sub pump go off every so often. It's been raining like crazy all day today, so uh, it's, you know, I hear it trickling right now. It's in the background there, but uh, it's in a kind of a closet, and, but it's loud. So if you hear it, please pardon that, that noise, and I'll try to, I'll try to edit out the, the times it goes off, if anything. So today what we're going to talk about is we're going to get into quadrilaterals. We talked about what makes a quadrilateral. We talked about the different types of quadrilaterals, parallelograms, what's not a parallelogram, but it's also quadrilateral. Went into a lot of detail in those things. And today what we're going to do is we're going to get into the angle measurements. All right, so put away your protractor. You don't need that today. We're just going to talk about angle properties. And you're going to notice that a lot of these parallelograms and quadrilaterals in general kind of share similar properties and we're going to go through a few examples and talk about them and make sure you guys understand it. The number one, looking at that first example here, number one, we've got, what is that? That is a, what shape is that? That is a, starts with a T, rhymes with clapezoid. Yep, that is right. That is a trapezoid. And not only is it a trapezoid, it's an isosceles trapezoid. Remember, triangles aren't just the only isosceles shape. Trapezoids are also isosceles. I don't know if you guys remember that from the previous lesson, but isosceles is trapezoid. And what that means, it's got two segments that are the same. And not only are those segments the same, those base angles are the same. So this angle right here is the same as this angle. And like I said, put away your protractor. Protractors are not going to help on this. What you do need to know is just some general ideas here as, as to what are the same and what's not the same in these shapes. So right here, if this is, if this is 71 degrees, well, so is this. That's 71 degrees. All right, so we just figured out number one. X equals 71 degrees. All right, number two, what shape do we have there? All right, it looks like a parallelogram, but I bet we could be more specific than that. What kind of shape do we have there? That's a parallelogram. It starts with an R. You guys know what I'm talking about? R-H-O-M-B-U-S. It's a rhombus. Now, a rhombus, I think I described a rhombus like a square that's been sat on by somebody, you know? And it's been skewed. It's been kind of tipped over, something like that. So a rhombus has all equal sides, and it's a parallelogram, too. So if you call it a parallelogram, you're, you're not wrong. That is definitely right. All right, so let's talk about parallelograms. Now, parallelograms, they have these opposite angles right here. They're opposite of one another. And what do we know about those opposite angles? We know that opposite angles are congruent. So this angle right here, if we know that this angle is 52 degrees, well, you bet this angle is 52 degrees. All right, now we're not saying that all these angles are 52, because look at these angles right here. So sometimes, sometimes people take this a little bit too far. They're like, oh yeah, every angle is 52. No, those angles right here are not 52. Look, there's, they're obviously obtuse. Obtuse means greater than 90. Well, all we needed to do is we needed to figure out D, and we did. We got it. It is 52. All right, moving on to example three here. Let's talk about this shape. What kind of shape is this? I think the K is an indicator or a hint as to what shape it is. It is a kite. And is a kite a parallelogram? No, it's not a parallelogram. But what we do know about uh, a kite is that it has these diagonals. Most importantly, this diagonal right here. These are equal sides. Now the thing you gotta remember about uh, a kite is that these angles, just one pair of them, those angles right there are opposite each other. Those are equal, those are congruent. So what we're saying is that K equals, angle K I should say, is 137 degrees. Now we're not saying that this is 137 either and we're not saying this is 137. Didn't say that. But what we did say was that angle K is opposite of 137. And you can kind of tell, I mean, can you guys eyeball that? This angle definitely looks smaller 
than that angle. Those angles are not the same. But on a kite, on a kite, if you take the two equal sides, this side is equal to this side right here. Those are congruent. At the base of those segments, you're going to have congruent angles. Now moving on to number four, example four here. What shape is this? That is correct. That's a trapezoid. It's not an isosceles trapezoid. It's not a right trapezoid. It's just a trapezoid. And here's where we have to do a little bit of thinking. I think those first examples were super easy. You can kind of just look at them and know what it was, but these are going to take a little bit more thought. Now, what we have here, what we have here is we have an angle. Let's look at the angle that's given. That's 61. And we're looking for angle A. So these angles right here, those angles are adjacent. And adjacent angles mean they're next to each other, but on So those are adjacent angles that are that are between the parallel sides. Now this this top part right here and this bottom part, those are parallel. So if we're talking about those angles right there, those are adjacent. Now here's one thing that you got to write down. So adjacent angles on trapezoids are supplementary. Okay, so we have angle A and we have 64. And what does supplementary mean? Supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. So we have A, we have 61 degrees, and we have 180. So I just set up a really simple one-step equation there to solve that. And all there is that you have to do to solve that is just take away 61 from both sides. A is going to be 119 degrees. So those are 119 degrees. Now I didn't ask you to do anything with this, but let's say I, let's say this is angle C, and we'll call this angle D. Well, here's what we do know about them. We know that C plus D are supplementary. They are 180 degrees. So if we did have an, a measurement for C, it's not 119. It's not 61 either. But if we we would be guessing, or we'd have to get our protractor out and measure it. But that's not what I'm requiring you guys to do. But C plus D, these angles right here, because they're between the, the parallel sides, they are supplementary to each other. Okay, for example, five, we have a parallelogram. And we're kind of doing a similar thing that we did on the last problem, which is we're looking at adjacent angles again. So this, this top segment is parallel to this bottom segment. So what we're saying, what we're saying is that angle 148 and angle M are supplementary. So adjacent angles of parallelograms are supplementary, meaning that they add up to 180 degrees. So just like on the last one, we can just set up a really simple equation here. M plus 148 equals 180. Take away 148 from both sides. Those cancel. And there it is. So 32 degrees. And like I said, put away your protractors. I think some people are like, Mr. Oliver, why do we have to do all these equations and all this math when I could just get out my protractor and measure it? It'd be much easier if we did that. Uh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to get out the protractor. We want to base it on what we know about properties of angles. Okay, like how angles, how those angles are related to one another. Okay, moving on to our last example here. Uh, and we have a, another example of parallelogram. And we're looking for angle C. All right, and this is the only angle here that was given. Now notice, I haven't really mentioned this at all, but notice we were given lengths. Every one of these shapes that I, I had on this handout had lengths of sides on them. And have you guys noticed the lengths of the sides really hasn't factored in to the angle measurement? So um, it's important that you guys don't confuse those segment lengths with uh, angle measurements. Hopefully you're not confusing that, but they are not. Right, so what do we have there? We have what relationship is 64 degrees? What relationship is 64 degrees to C? Well, those are again adjacent. And it's okay for adjacent to be side to side, 
in this case because these sides right here are parallel, right? As long as the, they're adjacent between parallel sides, then we can call them adjacent and they can have those same properties. So adjacent angles, just like we stated before, adjacent angles of parallelograms are supplementary. So I'm going to set up a really simple equation again. We got C plus 64 degrees is equal to 180 degrees because that's what supplementary angles add up to. Take away 64 from both sides. So 180 minus 64 is 116 degrees. So there's angle C. 116 and then if you add that to 64 degrees that's going to be 180 and just for the heck of it why not let's figure out all the other angles here so this is we know that this is 116 that's 116 now what's this angle right here well that angle is opposite from 116 and if that's a parallelogram those are equal as well so that's 116 as well and what is this angle right here well that's opposite from 64 so that's 64 degrees right there. And if you don't believe or if you don't trust that answer right there, add them all up. You know, 116 plus 116, or you can just do 116 times 2, plus 64 plus 64, or just 2 times 64. But if you add all that up, you know what you get? You get 360, which we talked about in a previous lesson, is the sum of the interior angles of all quadrilaterals, whether it's a uh, parallelogram, if it's a rhombus, if it's a kite if it's a trapezoid, if it's a square, a rectangle, any type of four-sided polygon is gonna have 360 degrees always. Not just sometimes, but every single time. Right, so that does it for this lesson. Uh, hopefully you guys went through all these examples. Make sure when you guys do these, you go through all the examples. You don't just go through one and go, I get it. I don't need to listen to you anymore. Make sure you go through all of them and you're taking notes, whether it's printed out or if you're just writing them out in your spiral, either way you do it, you gotta write them down. You can't just sit there and watch it. You gotta kind of write it out. I think a lot of us learn by doing, of course. All right, guys, so that does it for today's lesson. Everyone have a great rest of your day, and I will see you later.